that the responsibility to submit your physical body and your carnal desires to the Lord is yours alone. Did you know the Holy Spirit will not do this for you? He will help you, but he will not do it for you. He has given you tools. He has given you his presence, and he's given you the word. But the responsibility is yours to discipline your flesh, to renew your mind, to bring it into a line meant with the word of God. Today, we're going to continue talking about the subject of activating faith for the glory. In the last broadcast, we looked at the process of bringing our flesh into submission to God, presenting it as a living sacrifice. We started looking at the steps to activate faith for the glory. You already have the measure of faith within your spirit. In, in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16, it tells us that we were justified by the faith of the Son of God. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it tells us the life we live, we live by the faith of, of the Son of God. So if we already have his faith, why are we not seeing more people walking in the power and anointing of the Spirit of God? It is because we have not renewed our minds to the Word of God. We study it, we memorize. We look to it with academic eyes. We seek knowledge, but we do not seek revelation. We do not seek him. Did he not say in Psalm 37, in verse 4, that those who will delight themselves in him will receive the desires of their heart? Desires birthed in the presence, desires birthed in the fire. We have twisted desires. We take what we believe is from him and submit it for him to give. We submit our order based on our carnal desires. In some cases, out of mercy, he gives us what we ask. In many cases, our faith seems to fail because we are depending upon the natural faith, the faith of the carnal realm. For did not Paul say that those who are carnally minded which experience death, death being a separation from the presence. It does not mean that you are not a new creation, but living from the carnal does mean that you build a barrier between you and him. You seek his presence, but then you live by the input of your five physical senses. You live from this carnal realm, and death is a result. The things we experience, the sicknesses, the lack, flow out of that separation from the presence. For him to bring life into our lives requires us to be within the presence, requires us to spend time with him. He is the spirit of glory. He was sent to reveal the more sure word of prophecy which is the word of God. The master himself is the living word. He asked the father, the father sent the spirit. The spirit reveals the living word. Out of that revelation, we learn to flow. Out of that revelation, we do grow. Our relationship with him is something that must be nurtured, something that must be cultivated. But so busy we are, just as the Spirit has told us so many times. Too busy, too busy to spend time with him. Like a farmer standing by his field with thousands of acres and only a small packet of seeds. We stand there saying, but Father, I have planted these few seeds. Why am I not seeing these thousands of acres blossoming and ready for harvest? It comes back to the seeds we have been planting. We look to the news, we plant corruptible seed. We look to our sitcoms, we plant corruptible seed. We look to our movies, our sporting events, we plant corruptible seeds. We plant, we plant these corruptible seeds. 
and then a diagnosis, and then a bill. A bank statement comes in. A crisis hits. We turn to the master, and we say, but I had my five minutes. I gave you my five minutes each day. I attended church. I attended church. I served. This is like that farmer standing by the edge of the field with that small packet of seeds. Not enough to produce the harvest he needs. Everything comes back to the seed, which the master described as the word of God. To renew our minds to the glory within will require the planting of incorruptible seeds. The incorruptible seed of the word, watered by the presence of the Spirit. We yield to him, we set aside time. The choice, the choice is ours alone to make. So many in this day have placed themselves under the curse, the curse that Jesus bore in their place. You ask, you ask, how do they do this? They do this by seeking only knowledge, knowledge that fills the soul. Knowledge gained from self-effort, knowledge gained from academic study, knowledge filled with theology and doctrine, knowledge filled with man's thoughts. We look to Dr. So-and-so, we look to Dr. So-and-so, but we do not look to him who lives within. He was sent to teach, he was sent to guide. He will lead us through the gifts given by the master himself. These gifts are the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the apostle, gifts given to the body, gifts given it meant to speak forth the revelation. But so many have answered the call, stepped into their place as the gift he ordained for them to be, only to fail the master, to fail him by not pursuing relationship, by not pursuing fellowship. They became busy they became busy in their schedules. They became busy in the ministry and had no time for him. So what they speak from the pulpit is spoken from the soul. It is filled with the corruptible seeds of self-effort, corruptible seeds of men's tradition that can only produce a corruptible harvest. The master is returning soon. The sands of time are coming to an end. The trumpet will sound. And the question the Spirit is asking for us this day, where are those who will set themselves aside to be with him, to allow him to teach and reveal, to receive that revelation, those who will yield and speak forth the mysteries of the kingdom, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14 too. We speak it forth, we receive the interpretation. This revelation begins to grow. It is the revelation received by Paul. It is the revelation written in his letters. It is the revelation received by James. It is the revelation received by John and all the others with, through whom the Spirit breathed the written word. This is not a new re revelation we seek. It is the revelation hidden from the beginning of the world not hidden from those who will pay the price to yield their tongue, who will pay the price to give themselves to him. Yielded, yielded we must be. If faith for the glory is to be activated this day, the glory is what the world does seek. The glory, though, is not something that will come from above. It is something within every person who has been made a new creation. Those who have made Jesus their Lord and have been born again have been sealed into the Master himself with He who is the glory. The glory fills their spirits, but their minds are not renewed. Their minds become the clog, keeping the life and the glory within from flowing out. He is longing to change our story, to the story of the glory. But so often, our story is only the story of man's traditions. Man's traditions given birth to death. We were never meant to walk in this life alone. We were always meant to walk with him. Relationship, relationship, relationship. He gave the written word. 
That is our foundation. But too many are seeking for outward signs. It is the written word watered by the tongues of the Spirit that will produce the revelation of which Paul spoke of. Moving from the curse to the blessing requires us to move from tradition to the revelation. Revelation springing forth, bringing life to all who hear. The crowds will come drawn to the spark they see, for within that word contains the seeds of power that so many have sought. We gather, we gather and pray. We seek him for revival this day, but we do not seek him for fellowship or relationship. It is all about what he can do for us, but he desires relationship. And in that relationship, we begin to see the seeds of revelation given birth. The foundation, the foundation of it all, is the written word. We spend time, we meditate, and then we pray. We water the incorruptible seed of God's word with the language of our spirit. It will blossom, it will glow, the interpretation will come, revelation will flow. That revelation flowing out will produce the miraculous, the master working with us side by side, confirming the words of revelation spoken from that place of relationship. Friend, the one thing we've seen so many times if you've been watching these programs is this theme of relationship. The Holy Spirit was not sent just to manifest in our services and cause people to fall down or run or shout or dance. We need to learn how to acknowledge him. In the last program, I started reading from this word that came out on August 9th, where, Paul, where the Spirit of God kind of took us through Romans 12, 1 through 3. We looked in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I like that word reasonable when you think about it. The Holy Spirit is telling us that it is a reasonable expectation that we, the new creation, would present the physical body in which we dwell to God. We do that by placing it on the altar and allowing it to be consumed in his presence. How do we do that, though? Notice what Paul says here. It says, it is there within our spirit, for this measure was given. He's talking about the measure of faith. But Paul shows us the steps to activation. In the first step, we yield our tongues. We present our natural being. We yield our tongues to the voice of our spirit. As we yield our tongues, our natural being comes into line. It becomes tuned to the things of the spirit. So the first step is, as we've heard the Holy Spirit say, is to set aside time to begin to pray in tongues. If you've never received this, there's not time to teach in this broadcast. We've taught in other series about this gift, and there's plenty of materials out there. But the very best material is the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Just ask Him, Holy Spirit, teach me about this gift. You will see in Acts chapter 1 that Jesus commanded the disciples not to depart from Jerusalem until they received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, where He immersed them, where Jesus immersed them in the Spirit. And it says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4 that when he did this, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We present our bodies. We, this born-again spirit being, present our physical bodies to God when we set aside time to pray in tongues. And we talked about this in the last broadcast. But let's go on to the second step. In Romans chapter two, 12 and verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, this is interesting when you look at it, because what Paul is telling us here is you cannot prove the good, acceptable, or perfect will of God without first renewing your mind to the Word of God. So, if you have not taken the time to meditate in the Word, if you have not presented your body a living sacrifice and brought it under the control of your born-again spirit, then you cannot 
prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We run and you know dance, we seek the glory, we cry out for the glory, but we haven't done these foundational steps and we wonder why isn't God moving more? Friend, the reason he has a mo isn't moving more is because we have not done our part. It is up to us to set aside time to spend time meditating in the Word. Part of meditating in the Word is finding messages like this one and spending time listening. But when you listen, you shouldn't just be listening and saying, well, what does Brother Mark have to say to me today in today's program? You should be listening and saying, what are you saying to me, Holy Spirit, through this gift that Jesus has given to me? As a minister, I am a gift given by Jesus. We see this in, in, in Ephesians. He gave gifts unto men. I'm not lifting myself up. Your pastor is a gift to you and any other minister that you, you know, listen to. If they are standing in the office God has called them to, they are a gift to you. In my early years of ministry, I served in two churches, you know, as the senior pastor. I've served as a youth pastor. I've traveled as an evangelist. I've been an assistant pastor. But those weren't my places. We travel today as a teacher. If you're a financial partner with this ministry, you know, we have people who are coming together with us, sowing into the ministry on a ba monthly basis, enabling us to do these things. Those testimonies are yours as well. There's no difference between our team and you. We're all standing in this ministry together. We're all gathering in eternal fruit for the kingdom together we receive an equal reward, and that is just a passion of mine. But the thing is, I see all this happening because I'm standing in the office that he has called me to today. It took some time for me to get here, and when you first step out, don't be afraid of making a mistake. I've made so many mistakes, it would t probably take volumes to write about it. But you step out you sit with the Spirit, allowing Him to teach you, to get you to the place that He called you. When you get into that place, you can stand forth as the gift that God has called you to be to those around you. Because Jesus gave gifts to men. So when we listen to these messages, we're asking the Holy Spirit, teach us, Holy Spirit. We want to hear His voice. The first step, though, is bringing our flesh into submission. But then the second is renewing our minds, you know, our intellect, our emotions with the Word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, Peter talks about we're born again not of corruptible, but incorruptible seed. That incorruptible seed, Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 4, is the Word of God. We plant it within our soul. We give it time to grow. It connects to the life within us. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11, it tells us the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is dwelling in our spirit. The problem, though, is we do not acknowledge the Spirit the way we should. We're not seeing manifestations. We're not seeing the miraculous manifest more than a spattering here or there because we haven't taken the time to renew our minds to the Word, to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit, to submit ourselves to God. And as I said in the last broadcast, when you first start setting aside time, to pray in tongues, your flesh will fight you. But the choice is yours. Are you going to discipline it? Are you going to bring it into submission to him, to your born-again spirit? That choice is yours. You know, Paul tells us in, in on this word in, in, that came out in August chapter 9, in August 9th, he says in step two, we take the written word, we feed it into our soul, but we've now brought our physical being into line with the spirit but there is a clog between the physical and the spiritual. It is within the soul. We take the Word of God as we begin to feed it in. As we are doing this in conjunction with praying in the Spirit, we are releasing the incorruptible seed of God's Word that will produce revelation knowledge. Our soul becomes renewed by the revelation that begins to spring forth. It's not just the read, written Word fed into our reasoning. It is the written Word activated by the tongue of our spirit as we release the words of our spirit. The words of our spirit have watered that incorruptible seed and fed it into our soul. Do you see what the Holy Spirit is saying? And he said it's the written word watered by the words 
of our spirit as we pray in the spirit. It always amazed me when I was younger why it upset so many people when you started talking about praying in tongues. And what I've realized is because the enemy knows exactly what is happening when a born-again believer yields the Holy Spirit, opens their mouth, and begins to speak the words of the Spirit. You know, it says that God is a good God and he gives gifts to his children. Just like any natural father, one of those gifts is the baptism with the Spirit. And an evidence of that is speaking in tongues. We saw him first in step one. It's interesting the way the Holy Spirit did this. Because he could have said, renew your minds with the word and then present your bodies. But he put presenting your bodies before renewing your mind. In Romans chapter 2, it tells us, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That word transform pictures a caterpillar going into a cocoon. Now, if you look at a cocoon, can you see the tr- ca- caterpillar? Can you watch the caterpillar as it metamorph you know, into a beautiful butterfly? No, because it's hidden away in that cocoon. What happens is when we set aside time to be alone with the Spirit, to spend time praying in tongues, we're just like that earthly caterpillar. You know, it's tied to the earth realm. It, it, it's, you know, it can't fly. It can't soar. It's tied to the things of this earth. But then we set aside time. We go into the closet. We start praying in tongues. We look at the word while we're doing this. Not just feeding it in for academic study, but we're praying in tongues. We're looking at the word. We're asking the Holy Spirit to lead us to the right ministers to listen to. We're feeding on those words. We're not just picking messages out of, you know, haphazardly. If you're watching this program, I believe the Holy Spirit led you to this broadcast. As we do these things, our body's going to fight us. But if we will commit and we will just keep pushing it down, keep pushing it down, keep pressing into the presence, our bodies will come into alignment. They will become those living sacrifices God desires them to do. And then that word we've been feeding in, what he tells us again, our soul becomes renewed by the revelation that begins to spring forth. It is not just the written word fed into our reasoning. It is the written word activated by the tongue of our spirit as we release the words of the spirit. The word of God activated by the tongues of our spirit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, that he thanked God that he spoke in, more, in tongues more than all of the Corinthian believers combined. Friend, Your harvest of revelation knowledge is largely determined by your commitment and willingness to set aside time to be alone with the Spirit. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to give? The Holy Spirit is waiting. He is calling. Are we listening? That's really the question. What are you willing, what price are you willing to pay? What are you willing to give up? Are you willing to give up your favorite sports team for a season to spend the time you would have been spending watching games with him? Are you willing to give up the news headlines to spend time with him? He already lives within you. He just wants your attention. And it is sad that the majority never give him that attention. Friend, I believe that you are not one of those. I believe that you're watching this program, that you desire to enter into that relationship, that fellowship of the Spirit of God. He's waiting. He's waiting for us. And we've heard this in these words in times when I go back over the previous months and look at the things the Holy Spirit has given us. It's almost like he's pleading with us to just spend time with him. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to commit yourself to spend time with him? That's really the question. I don't want to live the subpar Christian life anymore. Do you? And really, it starts with presenting our bodies, but then going on to renewing our minds with the word. And the Holy Spirit tells us how to do that. He tells us how to get our minds renewed. It's not just studying from an academic perspective. It's not just volume. You may sit down to read a whole book. Like, for example, read the whole book of Galatians. 
And then in verse 1, you feel your attention drawn to a certain verse. That could be the Holy Spirit quickenings that you see. You take that verse, you begin to think upon it, look at it, meditate upon it, consider it. You see, it's not always the volume that we've read. It's the quality. It's not just you know, setting aside time to praying, because a lot of times in prayer, we're just whining about our problems. That's not what relationship's about, friend. We sit down with him, we can discuss our problems, and it helps to discuss them, tell him about them. But we discuss them from a place that the provision has been provided, and we're just asking him to help us develop the knowledge to enter into that provision. You will find the more time you commit to praying in tongues, the more tuned to him you'll be, the more your spiritual awareness will grow. In the last program, I started and looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16, where Paul tells us that he knew no man up to the flesh. It's interesting because Peter traveled with Jesus, and in his books, referencing Paul, who had never traveled with Jesus, probably had maybe even attended one or two of Jesus' ministry meetings, talks about the Pharisees being present when he was teaching and sometimes, and Paul could very well have been one of those Pharisees. So he had known Jesus after the flesh, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16, he said he no longer knew Jesus after the flesh. Peter, talking about Paul, who said that he preached the revelation of Jesus Christ, said our beloved brother Paul preaches hard things to understand because it can't be understood with a natural mind. Well, we are out of time, friend, and as we close out today, let me remind you that you can live your life to the fullest walking by the faith of the Son of God.